this has been happening for us for, for the longest um even something as small as like taxis mm. like um you, you go out on night out northbridge and when it comes to home time um now we use ubers but like um taxi drivers would always expect cash up front uh, uh for me yeah um I, and i was explaining to one of my one of my good friends actually he's like what do you mean they ask for cash up front? i'm like yeah like every time i want to go home to hop in a taxi they'll require cash up front yeah. it's like i've never paid cash up front i'm like yeah i know because you're white welcome to the sevo show we are here with emo uh he is from sudan that's it that's that's this intro now he's a comedian he's got the very first ever golden buzzer from a south sudanese export is there many uh, uh sudanese people that you have to compete with to to get that accolade or nah man like um like in the comedy game alone there's like no no South Sydney's uh, yeah. uh, comedians. Oh, there's there's one that just started up. His name is Chung. He puts out like uh, video clips on uh, TikTok and that. But um, yeah, there's like, even African in general. There's like hardly any Africans in the yeah. in the comedy game. Yeah, so, yeah. I mention it because it was is in the press. First yeah. South Sudanese. Yeah, the first. Yeah, <laughs> like it's very specific. It's yeah. like how many others do you have to compete with? No, so. no, just just not many um, others out there. Yeah, yeah. First yeah. to do it. You heard that. <laughs> yeah. How did that? How did it feel? Uh, for everybody, obviously doesn't know. Um, you're on the current Australia's Got Talent competition for 2022 and you're a finalist now yep competing but, against how many others uh there's six more six uh six more contestants yeah um we, there, there was those thousands that applied for it and then it was i think it was 100 audition 170 auditions or whatever whatnot wow um and then we're down to the final six yeah so yeah so is, at the time of this recording guys um he's you're still eligible to vote for emo and uh if you are listening to this recording after the following Sunday, just DM him directly saying you would have voted for him. <laughs> so, but here it is yeah. right here. Yeah. What's that number? Read it out. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, so to vote for emojis, I uh, dial 04077994. Um, and then just text emo um, three times because you're allowed up to three votes. Um, every vote counts. So for my WA people out there, represent um, and get behind me. I'm not just doing this for myself. So, yeah. That number again is 040 There you go. You heard it. You heard it first. <laughs> That's how you plug. So what is your story? How did you get here? And do you like it? Um, yeah. Uh, how did I get here like, as in Australia or like into comedy? Just any. Just Yeah. Just, start start with Australia. Were you into comedy before Australia? No, 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 no. I've, I've only been doing comedy for the last uh, four, four, five years, five years. Yeah. 2018 is when I really started uh, getting into it. Um, but, um, we started off like our Australian journey, um, in Ethiopia where I was born. Like my family had fled Sudan at the time cause we had the longest reigning civil war. Um, so they found refuge in Ethiopia, Ethiopia and my mom gave birth to me there. And then like, there was another little miniature war that came, um, in Ethiopia as well. So they fled one more time, uh, to Kenya. And then we were lucky enough um, uh, that Australia was taking on uh, refugees at the time. And this Christian organization called the Edmund Rice um, organization, uh, we having to make the short list. Um, my mom applied for it. And after some time, like medical tests, all, all that sort of stuff, we were granted um, uh, refugee status where we came to Australia. And I got to see um, white people for the first time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What was well, that like? Yeah, that was, uh, well, up until then, we would, we would see like one or two every now and then. Like unicorns? Um, yeah. Like, yeah. In, um, they, they would be out there giving out sacks of rice and like, working for UNICEF. You know what yeah. I mean? And then to be... Uh, where the factory is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel like you were going to get a lot of rice when you came here, or? Uh, like I, I just knew we knew when we um, when we left Africa that, that the hardship was now over. Yeah. Um, well, we thought that the hardship was now over. Like it was different challenges when we got here, but we just knew that we weren't going to go days without food and that, that, that type of stuff. So yeah. So yeah. it was it, like it, it was definitely like it felt like we had made it. Um, but then there was like a sense of like survivor's guilt as well because you got you, we left so much family behind and all that sort of stuff and then we're here starting this new life and having to readjust and uh, assimilate to the Australian way, which like uh, came uh, fairly naturally because you weren't looking over your shoulder no more as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Less um, violent here, eh? Yeah, less violent here, um, and just the the scarcity of food and 
like finding water and stuff like that was no longer an issue. So yeah, um, yeah. It definitely felt like we made it when we came to Australia. Yeah. What, what was the hardest part about transitioning? Obviously the survivors guilt, but yeah. when you're in the country itself. Um, well, because we 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 didn't know a single word of English, mm. so we had to start from scratch. Um, so we, we started off by like um, like you, you'd point, and then uh, our next door neighbor really helped us out as well. Like um, this lady Sue who had two kids, uh, Ben and Kiara. Oh, just recently, um, she, after so many years, right, um, she she found me because of Australia's Got Talent. So she found me on, um, on like I, and a week before, I was like thinking, wow, I wonder whatever happened to that, Sue. Um, just because I was, I was in this space where I was just thinking back about where where it all started and how we didn't know how to speak English and all that. So I was actually thinking about her and she met, like she, she contacted me a week later oh, telling, telling me I was just watching TV and there you were. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah, so we got to really connect and um, she sent us um, old pictures of when we first got here as well. So like there was that um, that connection that we've always had, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. but yeah, like we, we, we want to know what, what how to say water. Would point at it. She she would say water. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And you learned through that. Yeah, we, That's we, cool. we just learned through like um uh, um just like baby steps. Yeah. But yeah, it was like surreal. Just like looking back now about um being here back in 1996 and not knowing a single word of English. Like it's yeah, it's like it's it's insane, man. Like to to like find yourself in a totally different land and and learning from the like very beginning. I mean so yeah. I know like, very I, much I, what I, that's like. Like I give it up to like um any migrants that have done that in the past, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Do you know I'm I'm a I'm a migrant? Yes, I I believe Seb is not a um <laughs> a traditional Australian name. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, uh, Russian. Russian, yeah. yeah. So when when did you move here? Same. Ninety six, ninety seven. I forget which year, but oh, no way. around what, the time. What, what area? Uh moved to Perth uh -huh. in, in uh in Padbury. Padbury. And okay. then uh, after primary school, um went to Kalgoorlie to really see what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Where all the big shots go, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Um I've Kind of, uh, I mean, we didn't really run away from anything. It was past the Soviet Union era, um, but we did leave uh, for a much better life. Yep. And, uh, you know, as, as much as, you know, we were kind of doing okay there. We had property, we had farmland and, and uh, we were looked after because my grandparents worked for the government. Okay. Um, and what that means in that country is... You do dodgy shit, but you get away with it easier. Yeah, yeah. You know, with, with with the full support of the government, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shout outs to those to my grandparents. They're listening from above now, but you know, yeah. Cheers for helping out. What up, Nan? <laughs> um, so, do you know if you're famous at all in Sudan, or do they still have bigger fish to fry? Um, to be honest with you, I've been getting this abundance of, uh, abundance of support from like all. Like um, from all directions, like from, from on, on the globe, um, up until recently, like I didn't, I didn't have the Sudanese community behind me, like um, uh, so wow. it's so it's good. Like I, like say for example, if I'm at a, if I have a show and I have a hundred people in there, like I'd be lucky to have like five five black people. You know what I mean, like yeah. So so now it's uh, like I got to really see it. Like I I went to Melbourne and did my solo show there. Um, and it was like Def Jam, like the whole room was just like, really <laughs> you should have seen it. Like I went from having like no less than five people um, of, of color to, to having um, a room full of um, like people that look just like me. Um, uh, and we sold that, sold that show out as well. So you can just imagine how much uh, people of color I had at my show. So yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and so. what's that feel like knowing that, you know, you broke into the, the white crowd, yep. but then did you? How did you originally want to go about it? Did you have any sort of angles or aspirations that that you want to be loved by all? I mean, we yeah, all yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, man. Like, I, I, even when I with my material and stuff, nothing I ever say is malicious or um, comes from a bad place. Like, I, 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 I can, I can proudly say that people would come to my show and walk away with with with, with something. You know what I mean. Um, I, I am not a malicious person. I don't, I don't, I don't spread hate. Matter of fact, if anything, I, I, I spread empowerment and I, uh, I, I attempt to, to unify us, um, together just in the, with, with the tools that I've got, which is, um, storytelling and laughter. So yeah, it's, it's good that I have everyone sitting under the same roof and able to laugh at, um, at, at, at my stories and, um, my take on things. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And unity. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. We're, all, we're all equal and we're all, we're, we're all the same, but we're yet different as well. Mm. Like we need to celebrate our differences. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, so yeah. And laugh at our uh, 
you know, things that we have in common, things yeah, that are different. Because we can laugh about it, then we can now talk about it. Yeah, right? and we're not, yeah. I'm not hating on each other. Yeah. I mean, 2022, the last like three, four, five years where it's become a really PC culture. What's yeah. that kind of, yeah, how's that, that impacted you as a comedian? Oh, dude, like um, people try to silence um, us as comics, but like um, I myself, I, I am forever outspoken. Like I, I say what I want. Um, and at the end of the day, I lose no sleep because I know that my, um, my, my words are not malicious. You have good intent. Yeah. Great. Like I have but nothing but the greatest intentions. Yep. And, um, to anyone that knows me personally knows that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a loving person and, um, I, I'm, I'm not about, I'm not about preaching hate or, um, any of that negative stuff. Matter of fact, negativity, stay, stay in your lane. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Or gossiping so yeah. in general. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I, like I, I stick to myself. All you're ever gonna hear when 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 you see me on stage is my take on things. Mm. Like, don't be upset with my take. This is yeah, my it's observation. Op- it's my opinion. Yeah, like, you're not a preacher. Yeah, yeah, no? exactly. Like, it it may not be for you, um, but like, don't be upset with someone else's opinion because that's what separates us. Like, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, how's that impacted your uh, kind of way when you went to the US the to US? perform there in terms of like with the Black Lives Matter movement? How was how was that kind of the difference in performing there? Well, like um, like since I started doing my comedy, like I've been to New York uh, twice now, and um, like we 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 often um, undersell how powerful it is um, for comics. You know what I mean, like because we have a voice and um, a voice that's required in society. Like um, you, th- th- there is there is a better chance of getting the right information at a comedy club than you would from the news. You know what I mean? We're journalists. <laughs> Like we, we report things like like if, if something was to happen right now to to let's say for example um uh prince andrews yeah tomorrow morning all the jokes will come out from the comedian <laughs> i love like, that yeah you, it's you, my you, favorite part you would hear it first from a comic you know what i mean like um uh and and you'd, you'd get um an unfiltered um take on it yeah first thing that comes to their mind yeah, yeah. exactly that's what uh, my group chat's about yeah you know so, <laughs> so like it's important that we're, we're able to say what we want and because of this pc culture and everyone jumping on that bandwagon as well you know that they're not happy no but like like you see people at um say for example comedy clubs and stuff um like you say something that's on the edge and rather than um laugh about it they, they will look around and see if it's all right to laugh about it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, how do you how do you like uh, assess that? Um, so, I, for, like from the very beginning um, of my set, like I, I break down those walls, um, like try to get people comfortable um, with me, um, and that is because. I'm about to say some shit. <laughs> so you got you got to take down those walls, man, um, and, and let them know what you're really about first before you start talking about some of the, the yeah, you dice, break the ice. yeah, the dicier stuff. Mm. Um, and and then it's just uh, it's open game from then. Like uh, once once you've gotten established that relationship with your audience, then they know that hey, this is it's, this this guy sounds like he's just having fun. Yeah, you know what I mean, he's not out here trying to tell us let's let's rally up and kill everyone <laughs> you had a time where someone was just like no nah, this isn't for me and just walked out um not not walked out but um we well, don't know they might be going for a shit or something yeah I've, I've i've had people like um uh leave a review and say that it wasn't for them mm-hmm. which which is perfectly fine because i'm, I'm not in the pleasing everyone business you know what i mean do they say why it wasn't for them or do they just no nah, like um like during fringe like you can leave like um like there's like Hot, um, hot cup of coffee. Um, not my cup of tea. Would go again. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, like, yeah. You, you know those the, the, yeah. those type ones. And then there's the um, just not just not my cup of tea, mm. and w- which is fine. Like I um, like that better than a star rating because mm. the star rating can be quite like broad. Yeah, and, and you get that from your like your, your true reviewers who are yeah. your which which are your audience. You know what I mean? Mm. And like I said, like I, I I I'm not in the business of pleasing everyone. Mm. Like um I. This is this is the best example I can give, right? I got a friend, his name is Nick Roma. Um, we go out from time to time, like out for burgers or just hang out. Um, we went to Varsity last time and he ordered a burger with peanut butter in it. I myself would not like peanut butter in my burger, 
but each to their own. That's, yeah. my, that's my boy's Necromus fucking take on it. Like, yeah. he likes peanut butter in his burger. I'm not going to shit on him for, <laughs> like, liking peanut butter in his burger, but it's just not for me. But we're all different, right? Like, we're all different. So, yeah. like, um, I, I don't know how anyone can come to a, a show and not like it and then just write this big Yelp review about why they didn't like it. Like, ah, oh, you didn't like it? Just don't come back again. That's cool. Like, <laughs> you gave it a try. You didn't like it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh. I, I, I would never go skydiving, but yeah. but if I was ever to convince myself to do it once and I got that rush and I no longer want to do it again, then I, I, I can just pat myself on the back that I've done it. Yeah. Wasn't for me. I wouldn't try to talk. Wasn't my cup of tea at yeah, all. Yeah, I wouldn't talk other people yeah. out from trying it because no. who knows what kind of experience they will get out of it. Yeah, you know? so, exactly. Yeah. Mm. When I went to Milan, uh, the first experience I had with pizza in Italy, which I was excited about. Uh, and I made a video about it and it did quite well on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, and then all the Italians absolutely shat on me in the comments. Oh, for they, real? Were, they were like, there's no real pizza in Milan. The real pizza's in Napoli. Yeah. <laughs> um, who the fuck has Prosecco with pizza? Because yeah. I was like, oh, Pr- Prosecco's flowing. I'm having a good time. Yeah, yeah. And it's just all this like... Like <laughs> shitting on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what that's literally what everyone like what society's become. Like I had someone in my comment section. Um, uh, I think it was yesterday actually, um, <laughs> who wrote something. Uh, he, he DM'd me. Right. He took the time out of his day to DM me. Um, and um, normally I don't, I don't partake in in entertaining trolls, but yesterday I had time. <laughs> okay. I had time for you, Go my boy. On. So I went on, I went on his profile. I quickly took a look of um, who he is and like, all right, cool, cool. Let's analyze how we can end him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I just, I, 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 DM'd, I DM'd him back. I said, hey, bro, um, uh, you don't look very well. You look sick. Um, are, are you sure? Did he really? Yeah, yeah, he okay. did. Yeah. But I, I said, are you sure um, messing with me is, is good for your health? And then he, he messaged me back saying, um, oh, you, you did take a post. Oh, then I messaged him back saying, ha, 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 what the fuck made you think that you, I'd care about your opinion? He goes, clearly you do because you um, responded. I said, all right, cool, cool. I went to go write something. He, now he decides that he wants to block me. Before I could even, like, w- you, you started this dialogue. Yeah. So why, why, why are you running from it now? Yeah. So, so he blocked me and thought he got the last word. Um, so I just went on my, um, on my, on my page. And uh, I just told everyone to go put a donkey emoji in his DMs. <laughs> 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 He's got all these donkey emojis and people sending screenshots and sending it to me. Like, uh, <laughs> like I, had, I had time yesterday, so. <laughs> <laughs> Like you're not gonna like cast the first stone and then and then and then block me like like I sought you, like I I I, I seeked you out, no nah, man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I've got a I've got a question here specifically about the right wing media. Uh huh. Um. So, why do you think the right wing media in particular have targeted and demonized Sudanese people in particular? So we're shifting away from comedy for a second. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to your culture where you're from. Yeah. Um. But. Relating it to media because you're in the media. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Um, well, like the, the, for me to pretend that there, there there isn't a little there isn't a slight problem out there would be ignorant. Like I, I see I see what's happening out mm. there. Matter of fact, you see it as well. Like like um, my cousin, rest in peace. You interviewed him oh. just before he passed away. Shame. Um, yeah, such a shame. He went over there for his birthday and um and he and he died um uh, on his birthday, like, killed by his own people. You know what I mean? And when I say his own people, I mean like other Africans. You know what I mean? Um, so we do have an Af- African, uh, we, we do have a youth problem. But to put it in pr- into perspective, less than 1% of Australian crime is committed by Africans. There's another 99% that is unaccountable for. So to focus on just the Africans, it, 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 it heightens and, and, and creates tension that these are these, uh, the Africans are the ones that are causing this. There are like you never hear about like any rapes or like um, uh, major murders and like uh, gang shootings. Like th- that's not happening with the African community. But for all the channels to like rally up and like, like just blow it out. It makes people like myself and uh, positive figures in the community like a catch, um, like anyone else like that. It creates fear. Um, among th- those that, that you live around, yeah. like um, like you you, you, you see people in, uh, um, in in Dandenong, I think it was. Oh, there was, there was like a there was like a protest at, at, um, in in Melbourne some time ago, 
um, where they had to get many, many different cops to come come out there because there was word that it was going to turn violent. But that's because of how it's been blown out by the media. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that there isn't a problem out there because there is. And, like, internally, um, I speak to the, uh, to the, um, to the, 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 the elders. Matter of fact, while I was in Melbourne just recently, I, I, I went and spoke to a high school in Dandenong like uh, uh, just to go inspire the, the young kids, and and just 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 having that, like you you, you see uh, those that are trying to do positive stuff, they get shat on, man. Like like um, Jack Dow, remember like the, all the stuff they used to say about him to the point where he's actually quit doing football. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like you got people like Majok Majok. Like you, you, if you read into the comment section, instead of um uh, seeing these positive figures, they get shat on. Um, it, it, rather than like try to uplift them, they try to tear them down. And 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 I, and I feel like perhaps being in this position that I'm in, that I should empower my people. So what I do is like I try to empower them, try to encourage them to come out. Um, I, I, I speak at schools. Um, I, I've got some things in the works to speak in the communities and stuff, so I can stop, or at least attempt to help stop what happens to my cousin. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Because I'd hate. To, to find out down the track, like five, ten years from now, my daughter goes to Sydney or Melbourne for a um, a birthday and she doesn't return back. You yeah, know what I mean? That's a scary thought. Yeah, that's a very scary thought, yeah. yeah. So j just, yeah, like rather than pump out the negative stuff, I think the media should be showing more of the positive stuff as well, or at least balance it out. I, I hate the media for that. Mm. Like the, the main thing I don't even watch the news yeah. much is because it's just all negatives. Yeah. All negative stuff on people – um, and and people love that. Yeah, I hate, I, I hate that they they consume and they love it. That shock value. Like if you if you're gonna, if you're gonna air something like that, that's cool. Like you you should air stuff like that. I'm not saying I'd uh, be quiet about it, but but follow it and complement it with something else. Mm. That way it doesn't come out like it's just negative stuff that's coming out because that's all you seem to be airing. Like you, yeah. you, you don't put out the good stuff. You, you, you're, you're you're going for the clickbait. Yeah, there's a yeah. there's a channel on Instagram called Tanks Good News. T a n k s. Wow. And it's just f like real wholesome news okay. from around the world. Yeah. I love watching that. I miss the days when you'd hear about a cat getting rescued out of a tree. Like, <laughs> now it's just negative shit, yeah. Yeah, nobody wants to hear about the negative stuff anymore, um, the positive stuff anymore. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's sad. But, um, but no, it's glad that you're, I'm glad that you're putting that, that out there. You're not just just a comedian you're you've got a more of a an educational approach to it yeah yeah like i think that. i think a lot of comedians are doing that now um they're using that 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 channel that platform to really yeah, push ab ab positivity yeah. there yeah. is there is a question to segue to this um many uh many great comedians um come from a history of painful or traumatic childhoods um yeah. billy Connolly, alan davies Corey white kevin hart jim carrey richard pryor uh, Robin Williams also, obviously. Yeah, off, rest um, in peace. Yeah. Do you, do you think comedy is a way to cope and process those experiences? Yeah, like comedy definitely um, helps me um, uh, like express myself. It helps me um, connect and, and, um, and, and share um, my experiences so the next person knows that it's not just all sunshines um, and rainbows and lollipops, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I happily share like all aspects of my life when I, when I touch that stage. I almost leave it all on that stage. I mean, like, because uh, for me, my life is an open book. I keep some stuff private because I like my privacy, but I, I, I do share as much uh, of my experiences as I can. So the next person doesn't have to feel like they're doing it alone. You know what I mean? So, mm. yeah. And, and, and also it's just a, it's just a great reminder. If you think if you had it so like so bad that someone's had it worse, you know what I mean? Like, um, or if you, if you think that you've had it worse, someone's actually doing good now that's come out from that dark spot. Yeah, that perspective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's helpful. When you when you were growing up and you were getting into the comedy scene, um, who inspired you the most? Who inspired me the most? Um, well, I've only just been doing comedy for five years. Mm. Like, I'm a, I'm a kid in this game. But you were growing up watching comedians, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to watch Def Jam. Um, uh, one person that used to just, like, astonish me was uh, Jamie Foxx. I don't speak much about Jamie Foxx, but Jamie Foxx, um, you ever like just look at someone and you're like, oh, so that's where some of my blessings went. God just gave it all to you. <laughs> like Jamie can play the piano. The guy's a singer. The guy's an actor. Like the guy's good looking. Um, like, like he's just a package all in one person. 
Yeah. Like you, you, if, if, if you superhuman. Yeah, if you watch him performing um, at uh, on his stand up um, sets, he'll have the piano there. He'll sing. Mm-hmm. He'll like act things out. Like it's it's just it's, it's just so good to watch, man. Like um, so Jamie, like I, I think Jamie doesn't get enough credit, but like Jamie Fox. Um, all the kings of comedy. Dave Chappelle's comedy royalty to me. Yeah, yeah. Like, same. Um, he's yeah, my, he's yeah. one of my favorites. Like he is like he is just on a different like level. Like um, like you, you cannot compare David with with anyone. Like no. he, like what what he's achieved and just like the, the the envelope that he's pushed is just remarkable, man. Um, like you often you think of like great comedians. You're like, oh, what what um, Eddie Murphy did will never be undone. Like would never be repeated. Delirious. Yeah. Like what uh, Richard Pryor did. Yeah. You know I mean. But Dave is just in his own little pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way of comparing him with anyone else. Like, he, he's that guy that walked away from $50 million and still came back in uh, under his own conditions, his own terms, and he's thriving in his own little space. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, so Dave re- re- really inspires me. And it was cool because I was in uh, Montreal back in 2019 at the Just for Laugh Festival. And I, I, I met uh, Danielle Rollins from The Chappelle Show. Who, one oh, of I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love The Chappelle Show. Yeah, so yeah. Like, me and Danielle got to hang out um, with like Jeff Ross and, and we got high and just like, yeah, it, it was cool. Um, but just to have been that close to Dave through mm. someone else was, 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 was like a breath of fresh air. So like, yeah, that was cool, man. I'd love to see the segue from your limelight um, the in the spotlight on Australia's Got Talent now yeah. to be picked up and maybe even open for someone like him. Oh, dude, that's a dream for me, man. Yeah. Uh, one day I will open for Dave Chappelle. Like I'm a meet Dave Chappelle for sure. Like I, I know that. Like I, I know I know for a fact without a shadow of my mind. I love it. Like I, I will one day in some capacity work with Dave Chappelle. Like yeah. um, it's 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 written. It's not like it's, it's, it's undeniable. Like it's going to happen. What about noteworthy Australian comedians? Who do you have in mind without – you know, upsetting too many people. <laughs> like noteworthy? Uh, what, um, what, what do you mean? Like uh, any that come to mind go, here's, here's a person, she's a person that- oh, like great comics? Yeah. Oh, there's so many out there, man. Like my boy, Andrew Wolf. Um, oh, Wolfie, yeah, I gotta Wolf- get him on. Yeah, Wolfie, like <laughs> Wolfie's my dog, man. Like Wolfie and I, we, we write together. Um, oh, that's so, Yeah. Um, matter of fact, Wolfie and I did a regional tour about four weeks ago. Uh, when we went to Albany, Bunbury, Margaret River, um, where, where else, where else? Kalamunda, there was like seven shows all up we, like in, in the tour bus together. Like he just never switches off. Like he's just like zero to a hundred. As soon as he wakes up, like he's on all day. Yeah. Like on all day. I've had a like, writing session with him once yeah. and it was an experience. Yeah. Yeah. Like Wolfie, Wolfie's a machine, man. Like I love Wolfie. I was just actually talking to Wolfie yesterday. Actually he's in America. Yeah, I'm yeah. seeing some of the clips. Yeah, he's, oh he's in America. <laughs> he's just, oh, he's hilarious, man. He's, 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 he's saying this dangerous neighborhood in LA. He knew it was dangerous too, but he's like, oh, you know, maybe I can uh, I get stabbed or something. Like that, that might make me. <laughs> you actually put on a little bit of, of, of him, like his voice. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, well, yeah, Wolfie's a funny dude. He's got man. that crackle. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dog. Shout out to Wolfie. <laughs> Uh, oh, Roy, Roy's a good one. Corey White, Corey I, like Corey White, um, uh, like that's my dog too, man. Like, um, like he is slept on because he's very outspoken. Mm. Um, so like, what 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 tends to happen is like he like the opportunities that those that play it safe um, uh, get. Corey is denied those because of his outspokenness. But man, like honestly, w- w- when he finds his like fan base he'll be like a jim jeffries um yeah. it doesn't matter how many people hate him he's gonna have just as many people loving him and he'll be able to sell out um whatever capacity that he uh, chooses to he can drop a show and like whatever do, do a tour and he'll have his fan base follow him yeah it's all he's, about his fan base yeah so you can't get cancelled if your fan base is exactly you know they just go and he's, he's got his own little lane like right now it may seem like uh he's doing it tough but now he's doing well he's like, coming back yeah yeah he's exactly. on stage again which is good to see yeah man so like Corey's is definitely gonna have his own fan base and it's gonna to thrive um, uh, mm. when when he discovers or when 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 his fan base discovers him because mm. right now perhaps they're not aware of him so yeah mm. so talk about your own shows now you've got one show that's called just your typical Aussie yep um, just your typical Aussie that was that was back in 20 um, 2020 2017 I know 
20 a while back 2020 maybe yeah. so yeah. just to describe your typical aussie just your typical Aussie. Um, it's um, like it's it's, not, it's just slightly different to the current one I've got right now, which is African Aussie. So it's so it's it's about my take and my experiences here as um, as as an Aussie. Mm-hmm. So that was just your typical Aussie. It was a play on words. It was going to be not your typical Aussie, but that, not sounding negative. So we changed it yeah. to just your typical Aussie because you'd look at me and you'd be like, "But he's African," <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd find that I been here long enough to consider myself an Australian and then it's just like oh I'm actually just your typical Aussie yeah. just like you you have I your just, citizenship yep yeah, you exactly. can go to Centrelink if you didn't yeah. couldn't be fucked doing anything yeah yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. what else just, what other traits what other traits <laughs> yeah, I can, I, as an Aussie let's go let's go typical. I'm out here eating pies drinking chocolate milks <laughs> let's go typical Aussie immigrant go uh, what, what a typical Aussie immigrant would do yeah, uh, uh, hang so how out. do they behave, their mannerisms? Uh, um, back in the day, hang out in front of the Roland Jarman, um, uh, Mirabuka bus station. <laughs> <laughs> uh, North side only. Are there any immigrants living south south of uh, the river? Yes, there is actually. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot in Thornley. Uh, my boy um, Ebra is in um, Thornley, Peter Bowl. Lives out in, um, uh, well, his yeah. family lives out in Thornley. North, north of the river is Little Britain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we right. were to map out. Yep. Perth, North yep. North is Little Britain. Little Britain, straight up. Yep, Maribuka, um, that's that's Africans. Yep. Um, and Indians, Westminster, same thing as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Kundula, same thing. Yeah, Dianella is the Jews. Yep, the Jews. Yep. Um, the Italians, Belcada mm-hmm. uh, and Sterling. <laughs> yep. Um, Little Britain is Clarkson. Um, Russians uh, are about Giroin, maybe like bordering off the yep, of yep. the Africans and the uh, yep. what, and, and then what about the uh, the Asian North, culture? Yep. Northbridge, N- Northbridge, Northbridge um, is like, like if, if you go down the strip that we're on right now, yep. which is Beaufort Street and, um, uh, and Newcastle, yeah, Newcastle. Yep. if you go straight down Beaufort Street, you'll see everything is Asian. Well, yep. almost everything is Asian. You go um, the opposite way, yep. you'll also find the same thing as well. Like there's Chinatown out there. It's 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 a pathetic size Chinatown. Um, if you compare it to the other ones that, are, that I've seen, yeah. you should see the one in Las Vegas, man. Oof. <laughs> huge. Yeah. Huge. This one's like just what? Like, yeah. Oh, dude. I've yeah. been there. I've been there. I've, it's, I know, it's, I know it's, it's tiny. So, so Perth is essentially the immigrants have taken over in little different pockets. Yep. And the Australians, the native Australians, obviously the indigenous as well, you yep. know, respect. Yep. Um, but the what do we call them? The the ones that have been here for generations. Do we call them convicts? Is that a racist comment? No. To be honest with you, like um, uh, if we're gonna be uh, referring to like the Caucasians, yeah, um, as the Australians, then that has to be across the board with yeah. the Asians that have been here just yeah. as long as well, exactly. Because that is, like, that's where the diversity really comes along. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. um, like I myself, I I I I, I put. Um, African in front of Australia. Mm. Um, I put Russian. Yeah. Russian so when, Australian. So when yeah. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm African Australian. Um, and, and I say that because um, when someone asks you, uh, where are you from? Mm. They're really trying to figure out what's this look about. Yeah. So like <laughs> rather than messing with them, like I would just tell them straight up so I get less questions. And I, I instill that in my in my daughter as well. Like my daughter is half Mauritian, half Sudanese. So when someone asks her where she's from, she's like, I'm, um, I'm half Sudanese, half uh, Mauritian. But I was born here in Australia. Like that answers all of the all of the questions. That yeah, just get straight to it. Yeah, get straight to it. Yeah, yeah. You gotta do that back some back and forwards. Yeah, yeah. Kill, kills time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it kills time. So like, yeah. Um, where else? Where else are we going? We got. Let's go. Let's go to the coast. What are we seeing down the coast? Down the coast. Um, uh, th- uh, that's where the, the the Caucasian Australians. You'll find them there. Um, uh, close to the water. Yeah, <laughs> like, they are, they're, they're, it's no secret they love water. Mm. Um, and um, with 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 that head start. Um, generational wealth, like mm. you, you, they're, they're living across the coast in the more desirable neighborhoods, yeah. Like, um, like the like that, um, Cottesloe, uh, Cottesloe mm. the Apple Cross, Peppermint Grove, yeah, Peppermint Grove, the Golden Triangle, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. their, that's exactly. their hood. <laughs> like, I've, I, I would love to live by, by the beach, mm. um, but not too close, um, but I'd love to live by the beach one yeah. day, um. I live near the water right now. Like I, I live um, in Maylands. So mm. like, um, yeah, Maylands it, is nice. Yeah, I, I, I love. Rate, I, I, I rate Maylands. I love Maylands, dude. Yeah. Ma- Very Ma- diverse there. It's the one area where you can walk up the steps of the train station, and you will have a lawyer next to you and a junkie on the <laughs> other side. You know what I mean? Like, like 
all coexisting in one area. My sort of thing is uh, in, in, in like North Beach or City Beach, right? My, my wife, she used to live there with her parents and she didn't like the area because it was a bunch of stuck up people, you know, yep. um, stuck up white people in particular. And I was like, it's a really nice area. I wouldn't mind living back there again. She said to me, no, 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 no. It's all stuck up people. I was like, I love that. Not because I'm going to be stuck up, because I'm going to disrupt them. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, love, I love that uncomfortableness that people have Yeah. because they don't like how different I am. Yeah. You know, <laughs> being six foot ten, yeah. the short man syndrome. Yeah, that, that, I get, that would come the in The tall heavy. poppy thing. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> I don't see it anymore because I don't give a shit. Yeah. But back in the day, it really, really took its toll. Like I've got a trauma story. Where when my first prac as a school teacher, mm -hmm. I was second year, second semester in, and I had a teacher from a college that I won't mention yet, um, but uh -huh. apparently he's left the school now. But he was the uh, head of uh, PE, uh -huh. and he came from I think it was Warwick or Wanneroo. So some oh, people may old, figure it out. neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> no, those, those are great schools. But yeah. he was head of uh, the first six months there. So he had a lot on his plate. But from the get-go, and it was only a two-week pass-fail sort of, you can't fuck it up unless you do some dodgy shit. Uh -huh. You come to school drunk or whatever. Um, and, yeah, from the beginning he called me condescending. He's, and then a lot of other shit, right? And then second week, Wednesday comes along and he fails me. Oh. Out of nowhere. No warnings, no nothing. Just fails me. Now, that's fine. You can redo it and everything. Earlier that week, my su the supervisor from the university came in and, and passed me, right? Yeah. And with flying colors, he goes, you're fucking you're sweet at doing this. I was like, cool. But on the Wednesday when he failed me, this, this, this mentor of mine, supposedly, he also withdrew me, which means I get expelled from university. Oh, really? So I got expelled from oh. university. Right. In my second year, a second, and not only that, he told me that I should never teach. I'm a dis, I'm a dis, uh, disservice to to kids. Are you serious? Consider doing something. This guy else. sounds like a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. And I, I looked at it like as I was like, man, he, he's he's short. He's a lot of other things that I won't mention. But yeah, I just, it just I just felt like it came down to that. Yeah, yeah, Tall yeah. poppy syndrome. Like yeah. this, this, this dude, I was 24, 25, you know, whole life ahead of me, yeah. all this shit. And, you know. Attempted to shit on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's my trauma story there. And that's always kind of reflected on me like over the past kind of six, seven years of walking on eggshells. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, fuck, they're judging me or, oh, am I going to get the flick or, all of a sudden? Story of my life. That's yeah. why I like, that's why I like working for myself and doing my own thing. Yeah. There's no eggshells. Yeah, there's exactly. clients. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but what about yourself? What what some examples you can think of story of your life? A story of my life? Uh, like, dude, man, like this has been happening for us for, for the longest. Um, even something as small as like taxis, mm. like um, you, you go out on night like, out Northbridge and when it comes to home time, um, now we use Ubers, but like um, taxi drivers would always expect cash up front uh, uh, from me. Yeah. Um, I, and I was explaining to one of my one of my good friends actually. He's like, "What do you mean they ask for cash up front?" I'm like, "Yeah, like every time I want to go home to hop in a taxi, they'll require cash up front." Yeah. It's like I've never paid cash up front. I'm like, "Yeah, I know because you're white." Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, so that, that was one thing. Always had to have cash up front. There was a time when my phone died, um, uh, and I, cause I couldn't order Uber, and my cash and everything was I was using my phone to tap um, that night. So driver wouldn't take me home so i could run into my apartment and grab cash so i walked from northbridge this very street actually um uh you know further up there used to be like a nightclub. don't tell everybody where i live <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like so yeah. like further up there, there, there used to be like a nightclub like a bikey nightclub yeah uh, just just before Fitzgerald street yeah 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 so i walked from there all the way to maylands um uh which wasn't a, like a, a very not a bad not a bad walk but it's still not no like, like we had been drinking um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I had to t i had to fly out the next day on tour oh. as well, on tour as well so um yeah like that like that was that's a negative connotation on yeah. like things that I have to deal with. Like so moral I, of the story is carry cash. <laughs> have, have cash, make yeah. sure your phone's charged. So just because of that little small experience, mm. I had to walk home, um, even though I had cash at home yeah. plus my phone. I, I offered him, if he could give me the charger, I'd be able to like, tap and pay. 
He, 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 we wasn't having it. He's like, no, 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 just get out, get out. So yeah, yeah. yeah. that sucks. Yeah, but it is what it is. Like, um, yeah. it's been like that all my life. So, um, people just crossing the street sometimes when you when you're walking. Yeah, like at night. Um, th there's there's that sort of uh, uh fear. Um, but that's just normalized now. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, like I've I've had some times where I've served it from my end. Yeah. Um, and it's a shameful story. But at the same time, I've learned from it and gone, fuck, it's, it's that easy to, to judge someone. Yeah. I remember walking through Boston in the States with a girlfriend at the time, We're walking down the, you know, the street and there's a couple of guys there. And from memory, I think, I think a few of them were African, right? Yeah. And I have a lot of African friends. I have a lot of um, American African friends as well. Yeah. But in a, a, a non-common place on the street in that specific time of day, I'm holding my phone in front of me, you know, m like navigating where I am. And this guy makes eye contact with me and he has this aggressive look on his face. Yeah. And the aggressive look was what I was worried about. Yeah. You know, like this is why people should smile more. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Why would you be aggressive and be smiling unless you're a lunatic, right? Yeah. But then I quickly like kind of like put my phone in my pocket. And he made the comment. He goes, oh, well, just because I'm black because you're putting your phone away. You think I'm going to steal it. Like straight away, then and there. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. I mean, in the moment, I was like, he had an aggressive face, but that, that may look, look so like wrong coming across to them. Yeah. And like for forever, forever, forever after that, and this was 2016, forever after that, I just give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. No matter who they are. Yeah. If yeah. that fucking gets me stabbed, that gets me stabbed. You yeah, know, wrong like, place, wrong time. I'm, I'm very trusting as well. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, like, uh, um, but that served me so well. Yeah, but like, uh, it serves me so well now. It, it, it takes too much energy to, um, uh, to, to be upset. Oh, you know judge I mean? or be, be yeah. like cautious. Like, it's just, it's, 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 over, yeah. it's, it's so tiring. Mm. So, like, I, I choose. I choose positivity over mm. negativity yeah. um, because it, it, it costs you nothing to smile, but it, it yeah. costs you everything to be yeah. um, upset. Yeah. Like your, your mood and everything. Like exactly. It, it's, it's, yeah. My favorite hack going into Dubai, getting into a taxi, is uh, most, most of the taxi drivers are uh, Muslim. Yep. So Assalamu alaikum, straight away. Yeah. And as I walk in, I was, like I've tested this out a few times. Yeah. Go into the cab. And sit in, I always sit in the front seat. So they're a little bit like, the fuck? Yeah. But then I realized that they're dead. I mean, I'm a giant. And I need a leg room. Yeah. But they still have this kind of like, oh, fuck, you know, here's another tourist in my car. Fuck this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I say, Assalamu alaikum. And they just. Yeah. They're, they're, they're makes almost, they're, their whole oh, oh, shift. Almost like their shoulders just go down. Yeah. And down. yeah. They're like, this is my guy. Yeah. But then they start talking Arabic to me. I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying, bro. I use up all my cards, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's uh, it. I, I, I've, I've been in Dubai quite a few times. Actually, matter of fact, I was in Dubai one year for New Year's Eve um, with my brother. And um, I, I, missed the, I, I, I missed the countdown. Uh, we were doing day drinking and then by like, 10.30, I, I called it. I'm like, oh, I got to go. So I, 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 I walked into, the, I'm in the taxi. As I'm driving by, I open my eyes and I see in the review mirror, this little, uh -huh. I look back, I'm on the main road right now. The fireworks is going off um, at the um, uh, at Palm, Palm Jamil, like the Palm Islands. That the fireworks going off as we're driving down the highway. Like the Emirates Mall had fireworks going off. Like the the, um, the Nine Star Hotel had the fireworks going off. I'm like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. I didn't even make the countdown. <laughs> but the whole way, there's just like fireworks. Like the whole entire way home. Uh, that was a good trip. And then the very next morning I went to London. I I, 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 I almost wanted to neck myself. <laughs> I was so hungover. Man. Hungover as fuck. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For a country that doesn't do much drinking, there was a lot of drinking happening that day, man. Oh, mate. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard about, um, uh, what you call it? Uh, Qatar. It's going to be charging people, I think, $109 per, uh, for a pint. What? Uh, yeah. 109 uh, Yeah, yeah. Like Qatar is a uh, Muslim country, like heavily. For the World Cup? Yeah, for the World Fuck. Cup. Yeah, 100, like nine, 109 or 150, I think it was. And I Surely think not. I think that's like US dollars too, man. Surely not. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did you hear about that they also said that um, you're not allowed to have one-night stands there? If they, if they catch you having a one-night stand, you're out. You, 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 yeah, you dude. Get, like, it, it's like, a he, like heavily. Like, no, no. Like, come come to see the World Cup, but don't, don't be fucking each other. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. There'll be no fucking. There'll be no fucking <laughs> or drinking. Yeah. Be no, cool. you can drink, but it's going to cost you yeah. a, a, a pretty penny. <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. So, yeah, and there's there's all these other kind of things happening with, with uh, the FIFA organization too. Yeah. Like, I myself, I don't uh, watch soccer. Um, anything that takes 90 minutes, I, I, my attention span just doesn't work that way, man. That's <laughs> why they have a break in the middle. Yeah. Get a $109 drink. <laughs> no, if, if cricket, I'd never give the time yeah, of the day. No. Cricket's yeah. no good. Yeah. I, no. Like, I like baseball, but they've got such like innings and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your go-to sport? Basketball. Basketball. Um, I, I'm not like I'm not a big basketball head, but I, I enjoy basketball. Mm -hmm. Like um, Especially when I've got some time when I'm back home. I go check out like a cats game. Um, I just I'm on the road so much, so like I hardly there's I don't have the luxury of committing to follow something. You know what I mean, like um, like oh, a game, yeah. a game might be on and I'm out of town. Yeah. So like I just uh, I just watch when I, when I have the chance. I don't know. I, how I, these... I'm more so support a player than I do a team. So yes, yeah, yeah. I'm the same. Like yeah. when when people ask me who do you go for, I'm like I I like uh, Kyrie Irving. <laughs> a, bit, a bit of hot, hot water right now. Yeah, um, yeah, he's in a bit of hot water right now. Mm. Him, him, and yay. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. That's another. That's another whole rabbit hole we can go down. Mm. Um, so, I've got a few other things. Um, I've, I've got in my mind. Um, you went to you went to you went to Edinburgh Festival. Yes, yes, I did. Tell me a party story. Yes, yeah, uh, so Edinburgh <laughs> August um, six was my birthday. Um, Here so, we go. It starts. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, and like, uh, often when I travel, like uh, for some re reason, like my birthday always lands when I'm on tour. So like your your your, your colleagues, like your comedian uh, colleagues, um, end up being your extended family. Yeah, because you're ev everyone's out there doing it alone. You know what I mean? So my management, um, when I had arrived at my venue. Um, they're all trying to figure out what to get me for my birthday, and and they remember that I always talk about Hennessy. Oof. So I arrived in my green room, and they had got me this balloon and this bottle of Hennessy for my birthday, which was like super cool. And then, like to to even sweeten that night, like we sold out the show that night as well. Nice. So yeah, um, that was cool. I uh, went out with like my boy Carl, George. Um, went out partying, so like that that was. Uh, that was like a, a breath of fresh air to be around. Uh, I, uh, comics that I consider my friends because you have colleagues and then you have your friends. Yeah. You know? So yeah, those, they're, they're my friends. Like George, Aliyah Kanani, um, uh, Kyle, Legacy, um, Reuven. So yeah, like we had, we had a great night that night. Fuck but, yeah. But apart from that, like every night was it was about work. Mm -hmm. Like um, uh, we're performing every single night. We do as many as six to seven gigs, um, so some would start as early as like midday. Oh, wow! And as late as two a.m. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, you got to get that different type of crowd. Yeah. Well, which which crowd do you find most responsive to your jokes? Mm, my audience members for my show. Yeah. Yeah, because they have deliberately clicked. Oh, okay. Yeah. They have deliberately clicked on my synopsis. Yeah. So the ones that when you do those shows that don't have that specific audience, is that where you kind of take the time to test? Um, yes and no. But like, like for ex for example, like you put me on any lineup show, like variety show, I'm a smash. It doesn't matter of w what kind of audience it is. I'm I'm gonna do well. Yeah. Like that that goes for like the Melbourne Comic uh, Comics Lounge, the Sydney um, uh, Comedy Store, mm. uh, the Perth uh, Comedy Lounge. Um, like I'm a smash on a variety show because what I bring to the table and my conversations and stuff that I like my topics that I talk about is so vast. Like I, I could talk about my kids. I could talk about traveling. I could talk yeah. about um, uh, the current state of Russia and Ukraine. I can talk about um, what one night stands. I can talk about anything. Yeah. Like I, like I have so much range because I, I, I feel like I always say, like I've lived the life of perhaps like seven, 70 year olds. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've moved around a lot. I've traveled so much. Um, That's a and, gift. Yeah. So like I, I can speak about anything. Yeah. I love and, it. Yeah. And, and, and because of how much I travel for work, like uh, you learn how to serve it um, uh, in, in, in a way that they want to consume. Yes. It. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for being an immigrant and living in the country. Yeah. As well as being a city city person. So I have yeah. that diverse range. And this is why I like this podcast stuff too. I can I can talk to people and Joe Rogan says this all the time. He's like, I feel like 
I've got a whole bunch of knowledge that I've taken from individuals that he's talked to and he's yeah. just, he's he's not he's like jack of all trades but like it's it's become a collection it's yeah, like, yeah, a, like yeah. a library of interesting shit yeah exactly so it's the exactly, same exactly man like yeah. and, and like I, I i feel like um when it's all said and done and um and we're about to check out and head down six feet down what did you leave you know what i mean mm. so n- nobody should be taking knowledge with them no. It's it's to be shared. Yeah. Um, that way these uh stories and life hacks and experiences can further um add to the torch of the next person carrying it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta better the next generation. You gotta make a better version of you, yourself with your kids. Exactly. Get them to and, and, and allow them to, you know, discover their own world exactly through the through the learnings of yours. And yeah. if and if they still want to learn their own way, then that's that's okay. Like from a young age, my mum has always been very supportive of like me traveling. Mm. Like even when we were traveling for negative reasons because of war and like famine, we were still traveling. We'll mm. move from place to place. Um, and when we got into a better position out here, we, we moved around a lot from Perth. Like, uh, like we started off in Girraween, lived in Balladra, went to Westminster, Maribuka now Maylands, lived in Rivervale, like always traveled, moved around a lot. I travel and go, go interstate. Like I've been to Sydney, Melbourne, um, Brisbane, um, like all of WA. There's, you'll never hear me say I wasted money traveling. Yeah. Because what, what you gain from those experiences, like stay with you forever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. If you ever need a tall man entourage bodyguard token, yeah. bodyguard, with yeah. a bit of social media following, let top, me know. Top I'll, of the I'll list, my man. I'll top come with, the, I'll come with. Top um, of the list. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got one kind of reversal sort of scenario here uh, for myself if I was to go to uh, Sudan. Uh-huh. But it's a hypothetical scenario. So if the world was reversed and Australia was civil war torn hellhole, mm-hmm. would you describe Sudan as that? Yeah, war torn no, no, hellhole? No, it's, uh, it's, it's peaceful now. Okay, it's peaceful. Yeah. It's peaceful. It's peaceful now, yeah. Okay, better do some research uh, a little bit better next time. And Sudan was the land now, Sudan is the land of opportunities. Uh-huh. Right? Let, let's go back to when it was a hellhole, mm-hmm. hypothetically. And, and yeah, I was to... I was Australian, Australia Civil War, Sudan's a hellhole, and uh, uh, sorry, Sudan is now land of opportunities. What would you reckon my journey would be to get to Sudan as a refugee, and what would life be like when I eventually got there? Uh, <laughs> well, this is not me saying it, but uh, we, we've, we, we've allowed white people in Sudan before. <laughs> and, and they stayed a little bit too long. Uh, yes. they, they colonized the country. So the British had colonized Sudan um, until... It's so, happened uh, here, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, you, you might have a couple uh, eyelids batting an eye. Like, oh, keep an eye on this one. Like they, first they come and they settle in. And before you know it, they want to take everything. Mm. Uh, but I think with the time that we're living in right now and how tolerant we are and accepting, mm. um, w- w- your journey would be uh, quite fulfilling, man, because first of all, the best food is in Africa. I agree. Yep. Um, uh, the best fruit, um, veggies and agriculture is in Africa. Um, the, the women are stunning in Africa. Um, the air is more cleaner in Africa. The roads are not so good in Africa, but the, the air is cleaner in Africa. The fish is better in Africa. Um, like just as as a whole, Africa is just amazing, man. Like I have been to Africa two times. Matter of fact, I'm going to Africa in April coming. I have just been asked to do the Johannesburg International Comedy Festival. I've been to South Africa. Yeah, I've been to Joburg. D- d- yeah. The last time I was in Joburg yeah. was um, back in 1996 on, on, on the transit wow. here to Australia. Yeah. So, so I didn't to, stay in Joburg because apparently Joburg's not. A yeah, little, it's, it's a bit how you going? It's a bit how are you? Yeah, yeah. So d- d- just like to, like it's coming back full circle. Like I'm like the very first place that we traveled from Kenya, we was Joburg, <laughs> and, and then now I'm going back to Africa to Johannesburg, um, doing what it is that I love and um, and uh, performing in front of an audience of Africans, yeah. which um, honestly like such a great feeling. Um, knowing that I've got my people behind me now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. South Africa, 
um, April. So he's yeah. coming for you. Coming and coming. So what would you tell your six-year-old self about to board that f- connecting flight from Joburg to Australia? Um, just be patient. It all makes sense in due time. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I love that patience. I yeah. love I love the patience thing. Yeah. Just it, be patient. It all, yeah. it, it all makes sense in due time. Yeah. Yeah. It works in so many ways. Uh, one of the things that I really push against is consumer debt. So the buy now, pay later stuff. Mm. Uh, Afterpay and zip pay and Apple Pay and all that shit. If people had patience, those companies wouldn't exist. Yeah. But they tempt you and you get into debt. Oh, I've paid off in four weeks or whatever. But I'm seeing so much debt out there now. Yeah. And this these little pockets of debt. Oh, I've got to pay this in two weeks after pay. Oh, it's only a nine dollar penalty fee, but it gets bigger. Yeah. And then they're in debt for the rest of their lives. It's just Patience. Yeah. You have patience to buy something, you'll get it eventually. Yeah. And by the time you, you're you wanting to buy it, you may not even want it anymore. Sure. So the whole frugal thing. Anyway, another different rabbit hole there. Um, what is happening with the Australian uh, – Australia's got talent. We'll, we'll wrap it up with this. Uh, we'll go back to the original kind of golden buzzer moment. Uh-huh. Uh, did you know it was coming? No, I did not know it's coming. Um, especially um, at one point, because we were filming for like f- uh, 14 hours, 15 hours, and like they would be like, hey, we need you upstairs to this interview. Hey, um, um, you need to have an interview with Ricky Lee. Hey, we need to uh, get this this angle shot. Hey, we need it. And then like, um, I was second last, which is a, a weird time slot for a comic because the, the show starts at 6 and finishes at 11. So that's like f- some some serious hours of people being focused and, you know what I mean? And the crowd had to be there the whole time. Yeah, the whole Damn. time, yeah. So, so then by the time I get there, I'm thinking they're going to be tired because like it doesn't, like if, if you put it in perspective, if a gymnastic um, person is doing the act, as an audience member, that does not require anything from you. Yeah. Apart from just enjoying it. Mm. As a comic, I require people's attention to pay intricate details to the, to the information that I'm given because sometimes it comes out as punchlines and investments. So, like, I'm thinking, oh, my God, like, they're going to be so tired. I come out, so I'm on the side of the stage, like, hey, it's time for you to go on. So I get on and I forget my bottle of water. Uh, mind you, being like a long day of filming and all that, all that. Um, so I get on, get on stage and about maybe a minute and a half, two minutes in, I started noticing that my mouth is getting so dry that my lips was getting stuck to my teeth. So I was like, oh, can I get some water, please? And it was, it was going to take too long, so I just ran off stage, went and grabbed the bottle of water, and that was that water moment that you saw. Yeah. Um, and then as I'm coming back, like just my, my quick wittedness as a comic just came out. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Water's so hard for black people to find. <laughs> <laughs> and the room just went in uproar, man. And that just gave me the next le- level of confidence. And you, you can see the, di- the differences in performance after that. Like I just came out hot and just poured it home. And um, uh, Shane Jacobson, um, shout out to Shane, um, really loved my set and gave me the golden buzzer moment, um, which um, came as a massive shock to me um, because I was like, oh man, I fucked this up by running down uh, off the, the stage to get the water. But yeah, it actually just made the show. Yeah. So yeah. You made it, you made it your moment. Yeah. Far out. Imagine if you remembered the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Well, but, but then you'd have a different element of performance anyway. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And then um, I, I did my semifinals. Uh, that, was, that, that was on Sunday. That was a great set. Really enjoyed that. And um, I look forward to doing the grand final for, for Australia. Do this for WA. Do it for WA. Do it for Mira Booker. Yeah, for Mira Booker, for, for Mira. WA, for um, uh, every comic that's ever been told that you can't, um, the comics don't win, Australia's Got Talent. Um, yeah, this is for everybody. So, yeah, let's bring yeah. it home. Yeah, we've had enough musicians for a, a couple of years. Let's get some yeah, comics on Let's get some on comics the on there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. really looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, and it's, 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 it's in the hands of the voters now. You know the I mean? voters. Yeah, the voters. Oh, so it's entirely up to the Australian people now. So all you got to do is uh, just just uh, SMS um, 0407-779994. Text Emo Majuk for the win. For the Thanks. dub. For the dub. For the dub. <laughs> and uh, to wrap it up, tell me about your uh, 
this is the joke that absolutely got me in stitches uh, with your uh, little little gift that you've hopefully given me today. Ah, uh, my, my, my email air freshener. Yes, of course. This is for you, my brother. Uh, so um, I recently got merch, my, my own merch. Uh, I was deciding, trying to decide what kind of merch I should get. And I, I really like the idea of a car air freshener um, because um, uh, every single day you're gonna see me. You know, you're gonna like it's got my socials on there as well. Um, so if you wanna follow me, you can follow me um, at Emo Majuk on all, so, all so, social media platforms. You can follow me anywhere. Just don't follow me home. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a car air freshener. I sell it for five dollars each, and everyone's been buying them because the money goes to a good cause because with every purchase that you make, you too can get pulled over for having a black eye in the car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got one for each of you guys as well, man. So um, thank you so much for um, actually having me up here as well. I've always uh, wanted to work with you in some sort of capacity. Oh mate, let's keep working together. Yeah, I'm most Absolute definitely. pleasure. Yeah, you legend. So uh, thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, I'm gonna work on these sign outs a bit quicker these days. Uh, Emo Majuk, the extraordinaire from Sudan, now in the land of Down Under, absolutely making waves, absolute amazing man. If you have any questions for him, DM him, starting with the donkey emoji, and then uh, go from there, see what happens, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you uh, get that dub. Hey, my man, I appreciate you, man. As always, good thanks. Thanks.